have you ever wondered why some deck stains will hold up for three to five years and others seem to peel in one? Today, we're breaking down the real science and learn what separates a pro-grade deck stain from box store disappointments. We're going to talk oils, resins, UV blockers, and the chemistry that actually protects your investment. Let's get right into it. It all starts with oil. These are the four main oils that you'll find in most stains. Let's first talk about linseed oil. This is extracted from flaxseed, and this product has been the backbone of many stains and wood finishes for centuries. It penetrates deeply and warms up wood with a beautiful golden glow. Here's some examples of some stains that use linseed oil. The first one is Flood CWF UV. This is a linseed-based staple that has UV blockers. The second one is Cabot's Australian Timber Oil. This is a hybrid deck stain, but linseed is central. Now, this oil does have its downsides. Humidity isn't a friend of this particular oil. As it breaks down, mildew can easily form on the surface. It has a slower dry time and a lower UV resistance. Think of linseed oil like baking with butter. It has rich flavor and beautiful results, but it's going to spoil fast in a humid kitchen, especially if you don't refrigerate. The second oil that we want to consider is tongue oil. This comes from the tongue tree, which is native to China. It is naturally hard drying and water repellent. It resists mold better than linseed oil and dries a lot harder. This makes it a top choice for exotic hardwoods. Some examples of different stains that use tongue oil are Penafin Hardwood Formula. This product is built for dense tropical woods and Mesmer's UV Plus for hardwoods. This is a pure tongue oil formulation. The downside to this oil is it can have a longer dry time sometimes even recommending days between coats. And it's one of the more expensive of the oils, meaning that getting a product that's pure tongue oil can be a little more difficult to find. People also noted that after applying this coating to wood, that it can look a little more paler or a flatter tone. So if you're looking for a warm finish to your wood, pure tongue oil would not be the way to go. But I want you to think of tongue oil like this. It's like an epoxy grout. It's definitely going to seal the wood. It repels water and will take a beating. But it only works well when paired with the right materials. Our next oil we're going to consider is soybean oil. Soy oil is obviously pressed from soybeans. And it's also used in a lot of modern low VOC products. It's surprisingly durable when engineered correctly. And these soy-based stains are more eco-friendly and can often be found both in water-based and hybrid systems. Some examples of stains that use soybean oil are Defy Extreme Wood Stain. It's soy-based with great UV performance. And One Time Wood Protector. They use soy resins for long-term protection. The downside of this type of oil is that it doesn't offer much UV or mildew protection on its own. It can dry soft and even get tacky, especially when the weather gets humid. It also doesn't penetrate the wood as deeply as, say, a tongue oil would. I want you to think of soybean oil like a well-crafted smoothie. It's full of natural goodness, but it also provides steady, long-lasting performance without any heavy drawbacks. The next oils that we're going to consider are going to be synthetic or modified oils. These are specifically lab engineered for performance. These types of oils are alkyds or different polymers. They're specifically designed to fix what natural oils can't. They resist mildew, repel water, and bond tighter to wood fibers. Many pro contractors swear by them for long lasting top performance. Some examples of different stains that have these types of oils in them would be TWP 100 series. They use synthetic resins in order to get deep UV and water protection. Also Armstrong Clark oil stain. This product blends both the synthetic and the natural oils smartly. The downside of these oils are they offer less natural penetration. They don't soak into the wood as deeply as, say, some natural oils do. This can lead to more 
surface level protection instead of the deep conditioning. They can also possibly look a little plasticky or shiny, maybe giving your deck a more artificial look. It can also be harder to recoat because these modified oils form a film on the surface that can potentially make maintenance coats a little more tricky as there might be more cleaning and sanding before reapplying. Think of synthetic oils as a silicone phone case. They grip tight, flex without cracking, and protect through daily wear and tear. So we can see that all these oils have their pros and cons. The smartest deck stains combine a variety of these types of oils in order to be able to benefit from the best of each. For example, Cabot Australian Timber Oil, they blend linseed oil, tongue oil, and synthetic oils in order to be able to deliver deep wood penetration, tough water resistance, and strong UV protection. Similarly, Armstrong Clark Oil Stains mixes tongue oil, modified synthetic oils, and some soybean oil. They do this to be able to provide flexible adhesion, mildew resistance, and long-lasting durability. This thoughtful blend of oils is what helps professional-grade stains outperform the rest and keep your deck looking good for years to come. So oil is just the foundation, but the real difference between a stain that's going to last one year and another one that'll last five years is the stuff you don't see. Let's break down what separates high-end and low-end when it comes to pigments, binders, UV blockers, and mildecides. But don't forget, please make sure that you hit that subscribe button. Let's talk a little bit about pigments. This is more than just color. Pigments give the stain its shade and protects wood from UV damage. High-end stains use iron oxide or transoxide pigments. These are stable, they're fade resistant, and they can create richer tones. Low-end stains rely on cheap dyes. These look great at first, but break down fast in the sunlight. Some examples of quality stains that use great pigments are Sickens Prolux SRD, known for rich transoxide pigments, and Defy Extreme. They use nanopigment technology for deep UV protection. I want you to think of pigments like sunglasses. Cheap ones tint things temporarily. High quality lenses actually block UV and protect your eyes from the sun. The same is true with your deck. Let's look at binders and resins. These are the glue that keeps everything together. Binders lock pigments and oils to the wood surface. If they fail, then your stain is going to peel. Premium stains use flexible L-kit or acrylic resins that they're going to move as your wood shrinks and expands. Cheap stains use brittle resins. These will snap under stress, especially in extreme freeze-thaw cycles. Some examples of good deck stains that have high quality binders and resins in them would be Benjamin Moore Woodlux Oil. They have acrylic modified Elkid resins specifically designed for flexibility. TWP 1500 series. These are durable and flexible resins that are truly built for performance. I want you to think of the binders in your stain like the stitching in a work glove. If it stretches and moves, that glove is going to last. But if it's a cheap thread, the whole thing is going to come apart the first time you flex your hand. Let's now talk about UV blockers. Now we know the sun can be intense and UV rays, they break down wood fibers and they fade pigment. Good stains act like SPF for your deck. Now, high-end formulas, they include nano-based UV absorbers or transoxide blockers. Budget stains may include little to no UV resistance at all. Some examples of some wonderful stains that really excel in UV protection are Mesmer's UV Plus, known for its high UV blocking content. Defy Extreme, this product they feature zinc nanoparticles that do a great job when it comes to reflecting UV rays. UV blockers are the sunscreen of your deck. You can get a $3 bottle at a gas station and it might say SPF 30 on it, but you find that you'll burn within an hour. But then what about a dermatologist grade sunscreen? You see, you can put that stuff on and it lasts for a long time. Let's now talk about mildecides. 
Especially if you live in a humid climate, mold and mildew can turn your deck black. The best stains fight this before it starts. Pro-level products use commercial-grade fungicides, oftentimes the same that would be used in a marine or tropical application. Cheaper stains may skip this entirely or possibly use outdated formulas that lose their effectiveness fast. Some examples of some good stains that do a great job with their mildicides would be Armstrong Clark. They use high-grade mildicides and non-drying conditioning oils. TWP 100 Series. This product is specifically formulated for mildew-prone environments. I want you to think about it like this. A mildewside is like adding garlic and vinegar to a marinade. This doesn't just add flavor, it preserves. Without it, things go bad and fast. So, what makes a good deck stain that'll actually last? Well, first is making sure you have the right oil for your wood, high quality pigments that block sun, a resin that's going to flex instead of peel, UV blockers that slow the aging process, and mildecides that will fight mold from day number one. Now we all know that a label might say premium on it, but if any of those ingredients aren't in there, that deck stain simply won't last. Choose wisely, and you might only need to stain once every three to five years instead of it being an annual summer project. Please make sure you like and subscribe and share this video with someone who's about to stain their deck and might not have any idea what's in the can. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.